Welcome to Family Matters. Euthanasia, or assisted suicide, has certainly been in the media a lot lately, hasn't it? There's a strong push for assisted suicide to be decriminalised in New Zealand, as has happened in a few overseas countries. But note, it's only a very small number of countries or states. Family First recently released a report on the history of the euthanasia debate in New Zealand and an examination of what has happened overseas where it's been allowed. The report, Killing Me Softly, Should Euthanasia Be Legalised, by Professor Rex Ardar of Otago University, warns it to allow assisted suicide would place large numbers of vulnerable people at risk. In particular, those who are depressed, elderly, sick, disabled, those experiencing chronic illness, limited access to good medical care, and those who feel themselves to be under emotional or financial pressure to request early death. Patients, even those without a terminal illness, may come to feel euthanasia would be the right thing to do. They've had a good innings, and they do not want to be a burden to their nearest and dearest. It won't be about the right to die, but the duty to die. A recent documentary in Belgium, where euthanasia is allowed, featured a doctor killing a healthy young woman who is struggling purely with a mental illness. Those concerned about the rights of people with disabilities are right to be concerned as well. A disability rights group in New Zealand said, there are endless ways of telling disabled people time and time again that their life has no value. Another country to decriminalise euthanasia has been the Netherlands. Professor Theo Boer was a member of the Dutch Regional Euthanasia Commission for nine years, during which he was involved in reviewing 4,000 cases. Now he admitted to being a strong supporter of euthanasia and said, no, there's no slippery slope. However, by 2014, he'd had a complete change of mind. He testified to UK politicians considering the issue. Whereas in the first years after 2002, hardly any patients with psychiatric illnesses or dementia appear in reports, these numbers are now sharply on the rise. Cases have been reported in which a large part of the suffering of those given euthanasia or assisted suicide consisted in being aged, lonely or bereaved. Some of these patients could have lived for years or decades. Recent studies in Belgium have found that almost half of the Belgian euthanasia deaths may not have even been reported in 2013, and more than a thousand assisted deaths were done without the patient's explicit request, a so-called safeguard designed to prevent abuse. A Belgian politician admitted that during the debate on the passing of child euthanasia laws in that country, euthanasia supporters talked about children with anorexia, mental illnesses, and children who are simply tired of life being able to access euthanasia. Here in New Zealand, ex-Labour MP Marion Street, who attempted to introduce a law change last year, said, application for children with terminal illness was a bridge too far in my view at this time. That might be something that may happen in the future, but not now. The majority of the medical profession and national medical associations around the world have been resolutely against the introduction of voluntary euthanasia or physician-assisted suicide. Euthanasia will also send a conflicting message to our young people, to our communities, about suicide and the value of life. Please understand, opposing euthanasia doesn't mean that a person opposes compassion, or that they do not have huge empathy for those facing a terminal illness. Patients facing death have a fundamental human right, a right to receive the very best palliative care, love and support that we can give to alleviate the intolerable suffering that they fear. This is real death with dignity, surrounded and supported by loved ones, rather than a right to try and preempt the uncertainty and timing of the end. Assisting suicide is not the answer. We need a palliative care regime in New Zealand that is fully funded and world class. We should not remove the protection for vulnerable people, including young children. Please take the time to read this important report. It's on our website under research. Thanks for watching Family Matters. I'm Bob McCoskrie.